The town of Childers is preparing to mark 20 years since the hostel fire that claimed the lives of 15 backpackers. But travel restrictions due to coronavirus have prevented many of the survivors and victims from returning. Chris Campy is in Childers and he joins us now. Chris, it'll be a much smaller commemoration. Yes, yeah, certainly a lot more reserved than was intended, Georgie. This was expected to be a largely attended commemoration of that anniversary. It was supposed to be a day for the survivors of one of Australia's worst mass murders. It was supposed to be a day for the, the loved ones of the victims, the 15 who were lost, and also for the former and current residents of Childers to come together and remember the bonds that were forged in the aftermath. Of course, coronavirus did step in. Travel has been restricted. A lot of those victims were from overseas. So instead, inside the palace building, which has since been refurbished on the second story, there will be a very low key laying of flowers at what lasts as a permanent memorial up there as this town prepares to acknowledge the events of some 20 years ago that will be forever linked to its name. When the sun set on this night 20 years ago, the small highway town of Childers was blanketed in fog. It was so thick it initially hid the smoke which had begun seeping from the palace hostel just after midnight. Before long, the fire was tearing through the building, firefighters powerless to stop it. We were told to get out because it was going to flash over and then it flashed over and sort of blew us sort of out, out, out of the bottom building. With the building still smouldering in the morning, the town of Childers became international news. That was a very difficult part of the uh, job was, yeah, looking at those deceased bodies and uh, knowing how they died. Gary Church was one of the forensic officers brought up from the Sunshine Coast, tasked with finding the 15 victims, the majority trapped in one room upstairs. Once that fire started, the draft just took it straight upstairs. And those poor kids, they never had a chance. The 70 odd survivors were taken in by a town in shock, but ready to help. If this was my child on the other side of the world, this is what I would want somebody to be doing for them if I can't get there. The community wrapped their arms around those young people. They clothed them, they fed them, they looked after them. And it's created a bond between us and them that uh, will last a lifetime. That bond has continued to see many return over the years, but the current travel restrictions mean that tomorrow's 20-year commemoration will be a small one. The Childers fire has impacted on so many more people than just the victims and just the people who got out. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds of people all around the world for 20 years. And there's a connection to this place. I don't think it's a morbid connection anymore and it's not a sad one as such. There's always a few tears, but it's just the memories. And of course, Georgie, another element of remembering this tragedy tomorrow is of course the man who started it all, Robert Long. His 20 year sentence is coming to its conclusion and he is making a bid for parole. So not only is this a town tomorrow remembering loss and grief and friendship, it's also a town with resurfaced anger. Yeah, very tough day ahead. Thank you, Chris. Live there from Childers. And Paul Cochran's Childers, the full story, is now available on Apple and Google podcast apps. This is 10 News First Queensland with Georgina Lewis. Good evening. For 20 years, the town of Childers has lived with the scars of one of our worst mass murders. Today, they were laid bare as the town remembered a tragedy that will forever be associated with its name. The community came together to remember 15 backpackers killed in a deliberately lit fire inside the Palace Hostel. Chris Campy joins us now from Childers. Chris, many couldn't make the trip, but a touching ceremony still took place. It was a very emotional day here, Georgie, for the townspeople of Childers and also for the, the very many affected 
by the tragedy that took place here all those years ago. Of course, with so many unable to make the trip, we heard from them, uh, especially those uh, from a distance in letters, messages. They were relayed to those who gathered today. Those who visited the memorial, they did so with COVID spacing. It was the first time it had been open since the pandemic. So they went through one by one to pay their respects. Of course, so many of those people are forever connected to this town. They still talk to a lot of the Childers residents each and every day. The other impact today was that it wasn't just a day for remembrance, it was also a day of resurfaced anger. Of course, 20 years coincides with the end of the sentence for the man charged with the fire, Robert Long. They gathered on the second story of the rebuilt palace building in Childers, where 15 young lives were taken by the act of an arsonist and murderer. The memories of those lost will live on here forever. The passage of time has done little to dull the sadness. There's been some tears cried, quite a lot of tears cried, but there's been a lot of hugs and there's been a lot of friendships made over the years. Coronavirus restrictions meant today's commemoration was an intimate one, a reminder of the bonds forged in the aftermath of tragedy. If we needed a shoulder to cry on, there was a shoulder. If we needed a hug, there was a hug. So the whole community, they opened themselves up for us and made themselves vulnerable and took on the burden of our grief. So many lives around the world are still suffering from what Robert Long did here at the Palace 20 years ago. The man who lit the devastating blaze couldn't be ignored today, not this year. The 20th anniversary coincides with the conclusion of Long's sentence and possibility of his release. Never let the bastard out. Throw the key away. Why don't we just release Martin Bryant while we're at it? If we're just releasing the worst mass murderers, how would the public feel if we release Martin Bryant? They shouldn't feel much different from this guy. Outside the service, the floral tributes grew from residents, friends and those simply wanting to pay their respects. The permanent memorial to the victims had been shut because of the pandemic, but opened especially today. Of course, so many more wanted to be here today. There are hundreds of people across the world affected by this tragedy who maintain a deep connection to the town of Childers. It's hoped next year's anniversary might bring many of them back when travel restrictions are lifted. For all the survivors out there, they all wanted to be here. And so I'm here to say thank you to the town and thank you to all the people who helped us out during our time of need. In their absence, a large bouquet of flowers was placed alongside thanks from grateful survivors. Most were just teens two decades ago, travelling and happy-go-lucky when faced with unimaginable horror and loss. Their words were addressed to the people of Childers and signed from the kids. This town remains a very special place that survivors and victims remain forever connected to. And wherever they were today, they'll be marking this occasion in their own way. Georgina Hill spoke to some for whom the memories have failed to fade in the last 20 years. There are some things from that night that will never leave Richard Tempest. I mean, breaking glass, uh, you know, which does happen in daily life. Um, any elements of, of, of sharp, sudden noise that makes, makes me jump, you know, even now. He was 25, a British backpacker ready for an Aussie adventure. He'd been in Childers for one day when the palace went up in flames. I still remember waking all the others up. There was three others in my room. Um, somebody else opened the door to, to the smoke and, and the, you know, the, the heat. Not knowing where the exit was, it was a blind dash to safety. Richard followed someone else out. When you're on your hands and knees in the intense heat of the floor, um, not knowing where you're going to, what direction you're heading uh, and where you're going to go and get out, then, yeah, I think it, uh, I'm sure it did come across in mind, you know, am, am I going to survive this? Is this it? You know, once we found out, it was you know, um, so-called intentionally lit uh, that somebody's trying to murder you. You know, it, it really um, sticks in your mind. 15 people died, 69 survived. Tracy Sullivan was 19, here fruit picking like so many others. She was in a dorm downstairs. I woke up and everyone was screaming and just got outside. What sort of noises did you hear and uh, what, what made you just go outside? Just people just yelling, get out. And 
and stuff and rushing around and grabbing this stuff. Today from her home in New Zealand, the recollections are still vivid. I totally like think about the moments all the time and especially during like the month of June and you know Christmases and birthdays like that. You, it comes back to you, the memories and that night. But the other thing that stays with Tracy is the kindness of the community. Scared and alone, she decided to stay in Childers a little longer, seeking comfort in the arms of a small town. The locals have done a really good job. It's been really good to us all. I um, kind of felt safe in the community, with the community around, because they were, you know, really caring and knew what we'd gone through. As the years passed, most have kept in contact, mainly on social media. Some have returned to Childers to mark the anniversaries. Tracy Sullivan is now a mother of four beautiful children. It's always there and it took a few years to get over and to move on to, you know, restart my life again, pretty much. And Richard has two sons, little reminders every day of how lucky they are. Since they've been around and since they've been born, um, it, it, it does ring home of, you know, had I not survived the fire, then, you know, there's two more lives that wouldn't have been with us, you know. So, yeah, that's very special. Yeah, very, very special. Georgina Hill for 10 News First. It's been a very special day that we've shared with the people of Childers and those who gathered here today. Georgie, later on in the bulletin, we'll bring you more stories and a detailed look at the impacts that this tragedy brought a little later in the bulletin. We'll see you again soon. Thank you, Chris. Live there in Childers. Robert Long was the man responsible for unleashing that unimaginable horror on Childers two decades ago. As the town today came together to remember that horrific night, Long remains locked up amid pressure to keep him there for life. Robert Paul Long, an evil man who committed an evil act. His planned, premeditated arson attack that killed 15 innocent people made him a mass murderer. Robert Long has already pleaded not guilty to arson and the two charges of murder. And it set the course for one of the most controversial trials Queensland has ever seen. Yeah, a lot of people want to see some resolution to some of the questions that have been uh, asked and they're hoping that uh, either the committal hearing or uh, court appearance will answer some of those questions uh, that both the community, uh, families around the world and the survivors he was only ever charged with the murder of two victims, West Australian twins Kelly and Stacey Slark. The reason to expedite the legal proceedings. It meant that uh, there are only two deaths that needed to be proved, uh, both forensically and photographically. Across the 19-day trial in 2002 in Brisbane Supreme Court, disturbing evidence was laid bare of a volatile, menacing man who had a hatred for backpackers. The Crown Prosecutor described his motives as petty, small-minded and cowardly. The defence accused witnesses of lying and questioned the evidence of fire investigators. In the end, a jury of seven women and five men found long guilty. Justice Jutney said he couldn't ignore the fact that 13 other backpackers died in the fire but couldn't take that into account when sentencing Long because he'd only been found guilty of two counts of murder. He was handed a life sentence. I think it was uh, one of these cases which was effectively a landmark uh, because it brought to the attention of the public the very good work of the police. Uh, the sterling work of the prosecution. Long soon launched a bid to have the convictions quashed, citing unfair media coverage. His lawyers argued the case was subject to extreme prejudicial pre-trial publicity, but the appeal was thrown out. It wasn't the only legal battle. The Attorney General has appealed Long's sentence, asking he be given an extra five years behind bars. That too was dismissed. Two decades on from the blaze, there is still raw anger. Long could walk from prison within weeks. His application for parole is now before the board. Simply asking for parole is no guarantee that he'll actually get it. After 20 years locked up, experts say he will be institutionalised, having been told what to do, what to eat, when to wake up, every day. And while the world is a very different place to what it was when Long went to jail, 
no one will forget what he did. If he has a conscience, has got to live in the community knowing that he's taken so many people from the community without uh, reason, without good cause and with uh, absolute malice. He has never shown remorse. John Paul Gonzo for 10 News First. Well, let's return now to Chris Campy at Childers for more on the 20th anniversary of the Palace Backpacker Hostel fire. Chris, today's ceremony was scaled down, but it also brought fresh pain for those who endured the tragedy. Indeed it did, Georgie. The anniversary coinciding with the possibility that arsonist and murderer Robert Long may soon be released certainly turned sombre reflection to anger for many who attended today. Those ceremonies were, as you said, lightly attended because many couldn't get here due to travel restrictions. Local dignitaries were here to lay wreaths at the permanent memorial that was also opened to members of the public for the first time since the coronavirus. Now, among the tributes in there was a large bouquet of flowers that was placed on behalf of collective survivors of this tragedy. The letter next to it was one of gratitude. It was written to the, mem uh, to the people of Childers and it was signed from the kids. Now one of those kids was Sarah Mahoney. She was 17 at the time. She did survive the blaze and she returned today. We heard from her and the mayor of the day. Neither were mincing their words when it came to speaking of Robert Long. So many lives around the world are still suffering from what Robert Long did here at the Palace 20 years ago. Never let the bastard out, throw the key away. Why don't we just release Martin Bryant while we're at it? If we're just releasing the worst mass murderers, how would the public feel if we release Martin Bryant? They shouldn't feel much different from this guy. Even as we join with the members of the Childers community and the many affected by this tragedy all those years ago, it can be hard to comprehend just what a changing experience this was for the town. It quickly became global news. It was an event that changed fire codes in the aftermath. There was a police investigation that ended in a dramatic standoff. Ultimately, it was a moment of Queensland history that few will ever forget. Joe Hill examines the significance of this tragedy. The horror of that night 20 years ago is hard to fathom. Young backpackers on the trip of a lifetime plunged into a desperate fight for survival. She was like 30 foot flames about what, 15 foot away from you, 20 foot away from you, leaping up the side of the building. This stuff, you never believe this sort of stuff happens. You never believe it happened to you, your friends. Never ever, but it has. There were no working smoke alarms. Staff and guests ran door to door, frantically begging people to get up and get out. It was a big noise and then everybody woke up and like fire, fire was screaming. The victims were Australian, British, Irish, Korean, Japanese and Dutch. The trauma for the 70 odd survivors compounded by the fact they were so far from their families. But the people of Childers made sure they weren't alone. Everyone's just really helpful. The locals have done a really good job. It's been really good to us all. Police launched a massive investigation and word quickly spread through town about a loner who'd been living at the hostel. The man gave a chilling warning to a couple of backpackers he'd been drinking with that fateful night. Uh, he told them uh, when they went to bed to, uh, to leave their window open and make sure they could reach a fire escape. A full-scale manhunt was launched for Robert Long. His parents issued a stoic plea for their son to give himself up. Remember, Robert, your mum and I love you. Six days after the fire, 30 kilometres south of Childers, came Long's last stand. He tore across the road in front of us. I heard a batter pal. I'm pretty sure it was three gunshots. It was unbelievable how many, you know, they did a really good job by the sound of it. He'd stabbed an officer in the jaw, forcing police to open fire. As he laid there believing he was dying, the killer confessed. A quick-thinking officer hurriedly scribbled the words on a $10 note to record them. I'm dying anyway. I started that fire. He may face charges in relation to the fire at Childers and uh, at, the, at the present time I haven't made a decision when that may be. Long remained locked up as memorial services were held. We hope your, fa your, your family can take comfort in knowing 
that Julie was with her friends who remember her laughter and joy. Akara. Among the dignitaries to visit in the wake of the tragedy, political leaders and royalty, Princess Anne flew out to represent the Crown. In 2002, Long pleaded not guilty to one count of arson and two of murder. He was only ever charged over the deaths of Australian twins Kelly and Stacey Slark, a controversial decision aimed at expediting the court proceedings and allowing for other charges to be laid if he was acquitted. He wasn't. Justice Dutney said he couldn't ignore the fact that 13 other backpackers died in the fire but couldn't take that into account when sentencing Long because he'd only been found guilty of two counts of murder. Long was sentenced to life with 20 years non-parole. As he began his time behind bars, the community started to try to heal. A permanent memorial to the victims was unveiled in 2002. The original hostel was demolished with a new one built in its place. As the years went by, those impacted most continued to return to the town on each anniversary. Ten years has been like pushing through darkness every day. Long has recently applied for parole and could soon be freed from his prison. The town of Childers and the survivors of that hellish night likely trapped in theirs for the rest of their lives. Joe Hill for 10 News First.